Last time we started trying to minimize our expected code word length and we reduced the problem down to this constrained minimization right here. So let's continue attacking this guy. So let's, let's start by analyzing this function that we're now trying to minimize a little bit more. Let's call this thing f. Let's call this f of q. It's some function of the q's. So this f of q, it's the sum over i's, pi log 1 over qi. Now, whenever we're doing a minimization problem, it's always nice if our function is convex, or even better, strictly convex. So let's see if this guy is, is convex. So in order to see if it's convex, we need to look at the Hessian. It's a function of multiple variables. So let's look at the Hessian. So we need to take some derivatives here. Let's differentiate this guy with respect to qi. So the derivative is going to move through, and then we're going to have to do a derivative of something log of 1 over this guy. So let's, let's do a, a little aside over here. Let's think about, oh, and by the way, this is log base b. Let's think about differentiating log base b of 1 over x. So log base b of x is just natural log x over natural log b and usually I write just as a notational point I usually write log for natural log that's sort of a mathematicians convention but in information theory it's very very common most always you're using log base 2 so in information theory I'm going to fairly consistently use log to mean log base 2 and so then I will revert to the mathematicians convention or not the mathematics the engineers convention using ln is sort of more of an uh, engineer's convention for the natural log. Okay, but this is true for any base log, but it'll be, we're, let's use this, this property for the natural log. So we want to differentiate now with respect to x log base b 1 over x. That's the type of problem that we have. And this is minus log, or minus the derivative, log base b of x which we can rewrite using this as derivative lo natural log x over natural log b. And this is, of course, we just get the constant comes out, minus 1 over natural log b, 1 over x. OK. So that was just a little aside. And now that we have solved that little problem, let's use it over here. So back to our original thing. So we're differentiating this. The only term which will remain is the ith term. We're differentiating with respect to qi. All the others drop out, and we get pi. And now we have just this, minus 1 over natural log, make that a little clearer, natural log of b, 1 over qi. Okay, so that's our derivative. That gives us our, our gradient. And now we need some second derivatives for determining convexity. So we have now the second derivatives of f. And what are these? Well, if we differentiate this guy with respect to qi, what are we going to get? Make a little space. Well, this is just a constant. So that we're going to get minus 1 over qi squared. Well, if so, if if we sorry, if we if we differentiate with with respect to qi, we get minus one over qi squared. If we differentiate with respect to q uh, something different than that, then we get zero. So we get zero if i is not equal to j, and we get uh, the minuses cancel. We get pi over natural log b, one over qi squared, if i equals j. So what is the Hessian of this dude? What is, let's put it over here, the Hessian. The Hessian is, here I'll use a different color. The Hessian is just the matrix of second derivatives. And here, uh, so you know, the, so the, the ijth entry of the Hessian is just this thing right here. So the Hessian is this. And these are equal when i is not equal to j. I mean, it's equal to 0 when i is not equal to j. So that's 0 on the off diagonal. 
and it's something along the diagonal here. It's these guys along the diagonal. So for, for f to be convex, uh, or strictly convex, even better, so for strict convexity, we need this Hessian to be positive definite. And since this is a diagonal matrix, then the eigenvalues of this matrix are just the diagonal, the diagonal elements. So for it to be positive definite, we need the diagonal elements to be strictly positive. So let's think about these guys. Are these strictly positive? Well, the PIs are strictly positive. That was one of our simplifying assumptions. And log of B is, is strictly positive because B is greater or equal. It's actually greater or equal to two under our assumption. And 1 over qi squared is strictly positive because all the qi's are positive. So this is, in fact, positive, And therefore, this matrix is positive definite. Positive definite. That's very good. So that's nice. And that implies, that implies that f is strictly strictly convex f is strictly convex all right so that's a good sign so that's very nice okay very good so now so we're we're analyzing our problem and we found that our objective function f is strictly convex so that's a very good sign and now let's think about the constraint set so the qi's are positive and satisfy this constraint so what does that set look like what are those set what does that set of qi's look like i mean the set of all q's all 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 uh sequences qi that that satisfy those constraints what does that look like well if you're familiar with these kind of things, you might recognize that in fact that this, or you might might guess that this set is a convex set. And in fact, it is. So let's see why that's the case. So let's say, so suppose that so for convexity of a set, we need to have some, you know, we need to say that for any alpha between zero and one. And for any two sets of QIs satisfying this constraint, let's say QIs and QI primes. So if we have this, then we would like to show that, maybe I'll put it down here. Does that imply that if we take the convex combination of these two guys, that we get something else which satisfies the constraint? So we would like to say that if we multiply alpha qi plus 1 minus alpha qi prime, and we sum this up, we would like to say that's equal to 1. So does that equal 1? Let's see. Question mark. So well, we can, the sum we can move through. We get alpha sum of the qi's plus 1 minus alpha some of the QI primes, everything is, is positive here, so uh, everything is fine. And then these all, these all sum to one, these all sum to one, and so we get alpha plus one minus alpha, which is just one. So therefore, we do indeed have that. And so that means that, that this set, and also I guess, you know, maybe just also to verify positivity, Since by assumption all the QIs are strictly positive and all the QI primes are strictly positive, then this is also strictly positive. Okay, so that implies that in fact the set of valid Qs is a convex set. Set of valid Qs is a convex set. So this is a convex function. This is a convex set. And minimizing a convex function over a convex set is a very nice situation to be in. So life is good. And why is that the case? Well, maybe, we, maybe I'll draw a little picture over here to illustrate why life is good when you are in that situation. 
So you, if let's say we have just, you know, this is just um, general, generally speaking, say we have, maybe I'll draw it sort of looking down on the axis, close to down. Say we just have some, you know, some convex function like a quadratic, something like this. And this is the origin. Maybe it's minimized at the origin. Well, I'm sort of drawing it looking down on it. Maybe I should draw it from the side. So maybe this is the minimum here. Okay. So we have like a bowl here. Well, this is this is a, this is a strictly convex function and if we were minimizing along some some convex set then if we, we we were to draw out this that that the this function on that convex set maybe our set was like like this line right here on the plane then on that function that's going to look something like this something like that it would just be minim just restricted to that line and so when 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 this function is convex and this set is convex then this restricted function is very nice it also is going to be convex it's also going to be strictly convex so that's a little exercise that you can prove the restriction of a strictly convex function to a convex set is strictly convex and as a result of this if the restriction of f so this is a, this is what i'm referring to as I mean, not exactly this picture. It's going to look something different. But the restriction of f to the set of valid q's, if it has a critical point, if that restriction has a critical point, then that must be a global minimum of the restricted function. So if we can find a critical point of the restriction of f to this set, then in fact we have solved our problem we will have a global min of our constrained minimization problem and that is where lagrange multipliers are going to come into play so lagrange multipliers give us a way of finding critical points of the restricted function of a function restricted to a, to a set or at least that's how we're going to use them so we are now in perfect position to apply Lagrange multipliers, but maybe uh, before I, before we jump into that, let's so uh, this let's maybe this is another good stopping place. Maybe we should we ought to stop there since we now have we're in a very good situation. Let's stop there and we'll pick it up in the next video.